me and Roz go stand out in the corner. Within six minutes, you had put four players out of commission. And I mean mm-hmm. out of commission. And I remember re- me and Riley were talking about this yesterday. We were like, holy shit, you hit someone. I don't know. One guy I know for sure. You probably remember who all of them were. But you hit two guys, probably two shifts in a row. They literally carried them off the ice. <laughs> yeah. You caught someone coming around the back of the neck like two shifts later. And we're just sitting there going, this kid can hit, man. Mm. And uh, David Laliberte tried to grab you because he didn't know what to do. Like, <laughs> you, you hit yeah. another guy. You literally took three yeah. players out, not in a dirty way either. I mean, no, they were clean, clean yeah. ass hits, hard, yeah. clean hits. And I think we can get into it later, but I think a lot of times you've gotten kicked out of games where you shouldn't have because you hit so damn hard. And that's why yeah. I say you're like a shark. We used to say, even Chief would, Craig Barubi would say, it's like a shark, man. Yep. Like it, it's a talent to be able to catch guys. Nowadays, with the league, you hit a guy too hard, the arm goes up just because their head flies, and you hit yeah. him right in the chest. But anyway, back to the story. Poor Lally comes and grabs you because he doesn't know what the hell to do. I don't even know if the guy had ever <laughs> yeah. been in a fight. And you one <laughs> punch like the it. poor bastard. And I love David. I, love I haven't Lally talked to him in years. What um, a good kid. You catch him right in the chin. He goes down. And me and Riles are like, oh, my God. Like, this guy's a wrecking ball. <laughs> So we go back in. You had to come off because you kind of hurt your hand, I guess, when you hit him. And I'll never forget him and I are sitting in my office and you came down the hallway. You had your hand iced up. And, you know, I barely knew you. It's your first first yeah. camp, Riley. And you were like, hey, Cote, that was for you, man. <laughs> and, and we were like, I was like, I love this guy, oh, man. Yeah. And then Riley was dying. And then sure enough, obviously, we get to know you. But uh, it was a hell of a first impression. Oh, yeah, and they stopped the scrimmages. <laughs> After yeah. that, we didn't have yeah. scrimmages for since then that I can yeah. remember like yeah. like that. They did three on three stuff, three yeah. on three games instead of a five on five because of you. Which, hey man, heads up, boys. Yeah, right. You know? I mean, God, thank God. If you hit me that hard, I would. I'd probably be dead. But at least the guys <laughs> were me, dead. They told me before the scrimmage not to hit, like not to <laughs> not to like fucking kill people. Jeez. And I thought to myself, I said. That's not hockey. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not hit. Like I'm here to make the team. Right. That's what I want to do. Right. And I didn't care what anyone told me. So <laughs> I kind of made a point to hit a little harder, just to prove, but kind of put it in their face. Like, no, this is what I'm here for. I'm not here to pussyfoot around. This is what I'm here for. I'll make the team. And yeah, that they uh, they stopped the scrimmages after that. <laughs> I remember years right. ago when you were still with the team, you had gotten uh, kicked out of games. You got five minute majors. For the hits, but then you didn't get suspended because after they looked at it and slowed it down, it was like, it was shit, that was a clean hit. Yeah. And it happened to yeah. you a lot, man. A lot. Um, I'm not saying I you've ever get, had a hit called, that, that was yeah. bad, but. Yeah, I would get called just because if the ref didn't see it, but it was loud enough, then yeah. he must have, then the ref like, oh, well, it must have been dirty. It looked, I heard how loud that was. It must right. have been dirty or hard enough to hurt someone so let's call them and that's right i got a lot of calls like that so then they watch it and and uh, yeah. review it but i you know, I, I feel like some of your hits too like you're just a powerful guy man and if a head goes flying back these days you know even the last what four or five years i mean you hit a guy in the chest and her head goes back you get the arms going up yeah i mean and it you know probably shouldn't sometimes you know like there's bad hits I obviously remember, but yeah, I remember Lappy. I love Lappy. Lappy's a great coach. He's a great guy. I love Lappy. But he told me one time I was coming off the shift. He's like, Rhino. He's like, you don't have to kill the guy every single time you you hit the guy. He's like, just ease up a little bit. And that hurt me. Like that hurt my heart because I'm like, well, we're playing hockey. Like, I'm, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give it all, every single thing and every single little detail. I'm going to do it my heart. And if you don't, if I'm not playing with my heart, then I'm not going to play. Right. And it really hurt me that someone told me that. I, I didn't, never understand, never processed why someone would tell me that. Why ease up on a hit? Why would I not want to go through that guy every single time? Right. Uh, but as years went on, because of the, the hockey culture and how it's going... I have to ease up right now on yeah, nine, right. <clears throat> 90% of my hits, unfortunately. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
But if I wasn't, if I didn't lose money in suspensions, I think I'd have a different mindset. Right, 100%. <laughs> it hurts, yeah, no, right? I'd right. have a different mindset because back in the day, 10, 10, 8 years ago, if you got suspended, you wouldn't lose money. You would just get like street cred almost. Right, right. Like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Back then it was like cool. It was almost a cool thing. Like got suspended, fuck, yeah. your, your, your nails. Like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Something. Yeah. Until they start so, drawing all that cash out of your, uh, until out the of your paychecks, out, right? Man, and then it just really talk about your mindset going into that season and what you felt like you needed to, to prove to the organization that, that you were able to be a full-time NHL player. Well, that camp, I was 30 pounds overweight. Right. I so, remember that. So, them telling me you're 30 pounds overweight, go down to the HL and lose 30 pounds. Right, right then, I'm like, okay, I fucked up. Let's go down and let's lose this 30 pounds. That was my first thing. Second was, I don't want to be here in the AHL. So if my role is in like the hit, fight, energy guy, let's do it to the best. I want to be the best at it in the whole league. Best out of my whole team every single night. And that was my mindset. I didn't want to be in the AHL. I want to be in the NHL. And I thought... If I hit everything that I saw, fought everyone that came in my way, and tried to play the game at the same time, I'd be where I wanted to be when I was needed. So right. that was that was the only thing in my mind. That, like that's it. That was. And you did it, it to a T because like, you were yeah. killing yeah, guys, killing guys that year. I mean, I remember it yeah. like it was yesterday. Like, yeah. It was like every game it was like you left you know your 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 fingerprint on the game, and it was yeah. you know it was explosive hits and you know just turning it up and and, and guys coming after you because like you were yeah. like, like Dassey said you're a shark and um yeah. it was it was actually amazing to see and, and how how responsive you were to you know the uh the coaching right to, to, to lose 30 pounds i didn't know it was that much i knew i knew you you and a couple guys were, you know were we had to kind of keep an eye on 210 eh 210, 210. they wanted Jeez. me at like they wanted me at 180 because the camp before that I was like 175-ish, lean, fast, and I could move easier. But I came into camp at 210 because me and my dad were like, well, Zach, like, you want to play in the NHL next year? You want to fight these big guys yeah. and, and throw your weight around the big boys, like the grown men? I'm like, yeah. So I just ate and I ate and I ate and I worked out and thinking, okay, I'm going to fight these these big dudes. I'm ready, but I got to be heavier. I don't want to be thrown around. Uh, but clearly that wasn't the vision that – <laughs> they had for me, which is nice. Hundred percent. Um, so I, you know, they told me what I had to do, and I was dedicated to do it, and I did it. I don't know if you will or not, but we were already down two nothing to Boston. We went to. It was a year after we came back and beat them when they were up three nothing. So this is your you get your black ace. So they they put you in game three. Yeah, and Mark you Mark Recchi. Yeah, lined up against Mark Recchi. That's I'm right. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. And. uh so we play the game. We lose the game. Somehow, you and I ended up. I was going out to the equipment van. You were going to your car. I'm assuming. So the team bus is the Boston Bruins bus is out there because we have you know still got to play game four even though we're down yeah. three nothing. Yeah. So I'll I never forget. Too. Yeah. We're walking out <laughs> and it, Milan Lucic is big. Luch is standing over, mind his own business on his phone. And you and I are walking by, and I'm talking to you. You know, you did a good job today. Like, you had, a, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just were just shooting the shit. And you look over. Well, we both kind of looked over, and Luch is standing there. And obviously, you didn't know him at the time. No. I didn't know him. And he's on his phone, and he just kind of, like, looks at us as we walk by. Riles. <laughs> Reno goes, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> I'm like, Sounds about oh, right. my. I'm like. What are you doing, man? And I'm like, fuck, this guy's gonna come grab one of us. Man. Fucking like, playoff hockey, up. man. Yeah, no, man. I was like, but when you said it, and Luch, Luch, Big Luch is like, what? Is he talking to me? Like, I, he, yeah, did, he, he didn't, didn't say no anything idea. back. But I, I remember getting in the van and saying to the guy with me, I'm like, Reno just fucking told that guy, what the fuck are you looking at? He goes, Luch? I said, yeah. He goes, holy fuck. But I yeah. thought it was so funny. And then you end up playing with him. Now, you know, obviously yeah. you guys are buds. We but talked about it. We did talked you, about yeah? it. Did you? Yeah. I, I, he knows. He 100% remembers it. Yeah. He <laughs> thought I was talking to someone behind him. Oh, oh. So, so he says. So he, so he says. Yeah. I so told he Riley says. the story. I, I just said, I, 
I was just so shocked that you said that out there. Like, not on the ice, I wouldn't have been because you know yeah. you were. You know, it's part of your game of talking, trying yeah. to get under their skin. Yeah. But we're just cruising outside, and Big Lou just mind his own business on his phone. <laughs> the fuck are you looking at? I was like, L- oh, Luch is boy. like that too, though. Luch, Luch is like that too. If yeah. He's there, if you saw an opposing teammate like that, he didn't like, or they had something was going on, he'd get yeah. grill him a little. He would bit. say something. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was I was just shocked, but it was so. I was telling Ross, I was I laughed. I'll never forget that ever. Yeah. Oh, so.